in Verilog, you have these things called modules. Now, a module is a lump of logic that does a specific task. So in this case, you might have a counter that counts from, you might be four bits, so it can count from one or zero to 15. If you wanted to build a counter, then you define a module, name it counter, and then you have to tell the module what inputs and what outputs it's going to need. Again, that's because you're telling it which of these pins to link up to your configurable logic. And you need to tell it which of them are going to be specifically inputs, which are going to be outputs. And actually, sometimes you can specify that it can be either or, an input or an output. Now, inside your module, you're going to describe the code. You're going to describe the hardware, what you want it to do. There are two ways of going about this. One, you could tell it, okay, I want this connected to a NAND gate, and then I want the output of that NAND connected to the input of this NAND. I want the output of that NAND to go to Q, and I want this output of this NAND to go to the input of this NAND. You, so you can describe exactly how you want the hardware connected, or you can describe the functionality and the behavior that you want. So you could say, when the clock goes high and D is a 1, then I want Q to be a 1 and Q bar to be a 0. And then the FPGA code or the, uh, the compiler will figure out how to wire a circuit that will do what the behavior that you just asked for. And so that would be looking, kind of building it more like this and saying, okay, I know what this thing behaves like. I'm going to tell the FPGA how it works, and then it's going to build it for me. And, and either of these are viable ways that we use sometimes. So to begin, uh, let's start by building this, which is a D latch. So this allows us to save a single bit. It creates one bit of memory. We'll come over here into Bojo and create a new project and call it uh, logic components, I suppose, and Verilog. There's Lucid that we were talking about. And let's move these guys over. Okay. So here's what we're building, a D latch. The first thing we want to look at is what it generated for us automatically. Here's module, it's named Mojo Top, which is the default main application, so to speak. This is what everything else runs out of. And right after that, we have a bunch of inputs defined, and we have outputs defined, and some more inputs and output, input, output, input. So what essentially has happened in this part of the code is we've defined something that looks like this. Then we have some logic, we're creating some wires and we're hooking wires up to things, which is sort of like this. But this is all the generic stuff that has to be there by default. So we're gonna create ours. And this is a D latch, make it Verilog. And this is an invalid name, so we're going to have to change that to an underscore. All right. Here's our D latch module. It's going to have inputs 
and outputs and let's see what we need. Here's an input D and we have an input clock as well. We don't really care about the reset. Um, actually, yeah, let's leave it in there. It'll make things less ambiguous later on. Input D. And then we have two outputs. We've got output Q as well as Q, let's see, we'll call it NQ, not Q. You can also stack outputs so you don't have to type the output keyword multiple times which is nice. So now that we've defined the module and the inputs and outputs let's start figuring out what other components and wires we need. Well we have two wires in here wire R and S and these are not visible from outside. If you look at the chip version right here. We just have D, clock, Q, and Q bar. And all of these wires can are somehow connected to those, but R and S are internal wires that aren't seen from the outside. So we have to explicitly define those. Wire R S. There are two types of connections, two main types of connections that you can create here. The first is wire, which can only be driven. It can only take on a value from somewhere else. It can't store a value. It just gets a value from something and passes it on. The other would be a register which we denote with reg, and that is actually able to save a value, and essentially it is a single bit of memory, sort of like how we're building here. And so that can be connected and save a value. We don't need those for this type, but when we build this, we'll use the register. So wire we have R and S, and we're not going to, we are not going to use these. Let's look at wire R. Let's create our R wire. It's going to be D NAND did with clock so we can represent that with an AND and then not it at the end. To make this wire be driven by these values we can say assign R equals D AND double ampersand clock and then we want the not of this whole thing. Okay, now let's do the S. Sign S equals, we have not D and clock, whole thing knotted. All right, now let's work on Q. So Q is going to be R and Q not not. R and 
NQ. Whoops. Whole thing nodded because it's a NAND. All right. Now let's do NQ. And that is coming in. We have Q and S. The whole thing nodded. All right. And that completes the D-latch. So that's how to use Verilog to do, describe exactly how you want the logic components wired to each other. And in the next video, we will go over how to use Verilog to describe the behavior of a logic device. See you then.